Welcome students to part one of our organic chemistry lecture series for chapter 17 on carbonyl compounds. When you're done studying this chapter you should be able to provide IUPAC names for simple carboxylic acids and their derivatives. You should also be able to explain how carbonyl compounds react and you should know the various reactions listed here. Just so you know we will skip section 17.2 17.3 and 17.13. As I've stated earlier, I want you all to keep the big picture in mind as we dive into the trenches of learning numerous chemical reactions. Why do we have to know so many? Because once we know them, we can use them to assemble almost any useful molecule imaginable. Carboxylic acids and their derivatives are often called carbonyl compounds. A carbonyl, simply put, is a carbon-oxygen double bond. As you can see in this slide, there are nine different kinds of carboxylic acid derivatives that we will discuss in this chapter. Aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids themselves, acid halides, esters, thioesters, amides, acid anhydrides. We will later address just briefly acyl phosphates. Aldehydes and ketones, which are featured at the top of this slide, are different from the remaining compounds down here because they don't have good leaving groups bonded to their carbonyl carbons. All of these other carboxylic acid derivatives have fair to good leaving groups bonded to their carbonyl compounds. These leaving groups include this OH, this halogen, this OR, this SR, and so forth. Aldehydes and ketones, in contrast, have a hydrogen or an alkyl chain bonded to their carbonyl carbons. Hydrogens and alkyl groups are not good leaving groups not like an OH or a halogen or an OR. Because of this difference, aldehydes and ketones react differently from all of these other carboxylic acid derivatives. This will become more apparent as we move along. Here we see several biologically relevant carboxylic acids. Pyruvic acid, for example, is a key intermediate formed when our bodies convert sugar into energy. Succinic acid and citric acid are also key intermediates traversed during metabolism. The prostaglandins featured down here are responsible for numerous biological events, including the regulation of muscle contraction and relaxation. I'll now guide you through the necessary steps of generating a systematic IUPAC name for simple carboxylic acids. First, we have to find the parent chain, which is the longest carbon chain that contains the carboxylic acid. Second, we have to number the carbon atoms in that chain in the direction that gives the smallest number to the carboxylic acid. In other words, the carbon in the carboxylic acid will always be position number one. Third, we have to write the name as a single word. We write the parent chain, and we replace the E that would normally be present in that size of parent chain, for example, ethane or propane or butane. We replace that E with the suffix oic acid. If there are any substituents along that chain, we list them in alphabetical order and use prefixes di, tri, etc. Uh, if the same substituent is present multiple times in the molecule. So here are some examples that I've given for you to look at. You'll notice this first example has three carbons long. A three carbon long chain by IUPAC standards is called propane. Because this is a carboxylic acid derivative of propane, we start numbering it at this carbon being carbon one, this is carbon two, and this is carbon three. We take off the letter E at the end of the word propane and replace it with the suffix oic acid. Thus, this compound is called propanoic acid. 
If we look at this compound, we will count the number of carbons in the longest chain containing the carboxylic acid and see that that chain is five carbons long. We number that chain, of course, beginning at the carbonyl carbon. This uh, five carbon long chain under IUPAC standards is normally called pentane. Because this is a carboxylic acid, we replace the E at the end of pentane with oic acid. So this is called pentanoic acid. This carboxylic acid has a methyl group dangling as a substituent off of carbon number four. Thus, it is called 4-methyl pentanoic acid. This is an interesting compound. It has two carboxylic acids, one at position one and the other at position eight. We number in this direction going left to right because it gives us the lower number for the substituents. Selecting the opposite uh, direction for numbering would give the same numbers to both carboxylic acids. So differentiating between the two directions is done by giving the direction that gives you the lower number for the substituents. This compound has eight carbons, which is normally octane. We replace the letter E, however, with the suffix dioic acid, because there are two carboxylic acid groups in this molecule. Thus, this compound is called octane dioic acid. Because it has an ethyl substituent at carbon 3 and a methyl substituent at carbon 6, we place these alphabetically according to the first letter of the substituent's name here at the beginning of the name. Thus, the full name is 3-ethyl-6-methyl-octane dioic acid. Acid halides, which look just like carboxylic acids, except that the OH has been replaced with a halogen atom, are named by following the same steps used for carboxylic acids, except that we replace the letter E in the regular alkane name with the suffix oil bromide, oil chloride, or oil iodide. Here are a few examples. This compound has got three carbons in its main chain. Three carbon long IUPAC name is propane. The systematic name for this compound would be propanoyl chloride. This, co this uh, name right here written is actually a common name, propionyl chloride, which is also acceptable, but the IUPAC name would be propanoyl chloride. This compound has four carbons, which is a butane. We call it then butanoyl bromide and it has a methyl substituent on carbon number two. It is therefore called 2-methylbutanoyl bromide. This entire compound is four carbons long again. It is a butanoyl iodide. Coming off of position two is a methyl and position three is a chloro. The full name therefore is 3-chloro-2-methylbutanoyl iodide. <laughs>